Hey badasses, welcome back to the Badass Careers YouTube channel, which is all about helping you to do your career by design so that you can do work that you freaking love. And today we are talking about networking using LinkedIn for career changes. Now, career changes are actually in one of the most prime positions to be able to network effectively and have those internal referrals flowing in, have those doors open, have those offers to have your resume forwarded on to the HR team and so on and so forth. So we want to make sure that you are making the most of this opportunity because for a career changer, it can actually be particularly difficult to get results through just applying online. And when you don't get results, you end up settling or giving up, right? And we don't want that to happen for you because career change is so, so possible, my friends. The reason that you may not be getting as much traction online is that some recruiters can be a little bit lazy and they want the most straightforward profile to present to the hiring manager, the ultimate decision maker, right? And so if you don't have the education that they're looking for, if you don't have the work experience that they're after exactly, if you don't have that specific job title as your most recent role, they may overlook you. When it comes to networking, what's really powerful is that people understand who you are first. They know who you are, what you're all about, what you want next, what you're passionate about, and what is it driving you to make this change. They get to know a little bit more around your why, around your purpose. And this is huge. This is tapping into human nature and understanding and being able to do favors for one another because they connect with you as a human being, regardless of what your most recent job title was or what your story has been to this point, okay? And so networking really unlocks huge, huge results for career changes. So in this video, I want to go over, you know, how to network, where do you find the people, how do you approach them? What do you say to them? I've actually got scripts for you. I've got templates. I've got literally everything that you need to make it happen. And then when you're having chats with people, what are some of the questions you can ask them? The whole A to Z networking for career changes. Don't worry, I have got you. I'm gonna give you as much as I can in the next few minutes. But just before I jump in, if you haven't heard, I am running for the first time a brand new live training. It is called Career by design and I would love to have you there. I will never be running this training live again. It is a one-off. I am offering three different time zone opportunities. So, you know, definitely click the link below, sign up using your local time zone and we are gonna have a party and we're gonna talk about some of the strategies that you can use to really design your career on purpose and make moves that are very fulfilling and very aligned to who you are as a person. So I'm gonna be giving away some of the things that until now I have very much kept close to me and guarded for my private clients. So if you wanna hang out with me, definitely check that out. It is going down very, very soon and I want to see you there. Okay, so networking for career changes. Now we want you to be having what I call career curiosity conversations. And you're in the prime position to be able to have these because these conversations don't have any pretense around, I want something out of you. It takes that sleaziness out of networking and it's about genuine connection, curiosity, and understanding. You're gonna be having these conversations with people because you genuinely want to understand what it feels like to work in that profession you think that you want to do. And not only that, but what it feels like to work there in a multitude of different contexts, cultures, company sizes. It's like you're doing investigation, essentially. And so you are genuinely with me here. You are genuinely just wanting to figure that out. You're wanting to know more, you're wanting to learn more. And you're here to listen and to learn. And as a career changer, you get to put up your hand and say, I literally just wanna make sure that how I think it's gonna be is actually how it's gonna be. And so being able to connect with people in this very genuine way via these career curiosity conversations opens the door. Now, when you connect and you vibe and you stay in contact and you send through that resume of yours to, for them to give you feedback and whatever that looks like, that's when the offers start rolling in just as a byproduct of this in terms of let me forward your resume on, let me introduce you to my manager, let me do X, Y, Z, let me make sure your name is known by that right department. That's a byproduct of this work, of this activity of networking, but it's not necessarily what you're 
entering these conversations expecting or gunning for because you know people can smell an ulterior motive from miles away right so you want to genuinely come in from that posture of connecting with like-minded humans who are doing cool things that you are potentially interested in okay and the goal is you want to have about 10 to 15 of these conversations I know that sounds like a lot but really before making a life-changing career move it's absolutely worth it so the first question I want to tackle is where do you find these people now the most obvious is in your current network, in your current circle. And I'm not just talking about, you know, siblings, parents, uncles, aunties, that kind of thing, but who do they know? Where do your cousins work? You know, who's your cousin's best friend? Think about all the people you kind of know, old professors, people that you studied with, all that kind of thing, and see if you can start identifying some interesting people that may know other people that you could connect with, okay? So you wanna make sure that your network knows that you're looking to connect and converse with people on this particular topic. I want you to make sure that your hairdresser knows about this, your PT knows about this, everyone you meet should know about the kind of people that you're looking to connect with and chat with because you honestly never know, you never know. I also want you to go onto your LinkedIn and give your first degree connections a stalk and see where they have ended up. I did this once and I realized that my intern when I was working over at L'Oreal in Paris. She works at Google now and I hadn't seen that update on LinkedIn and it's like oh cool I've got like a really close connection at Google now. Go through your first degree LinkedIn connections as well and remind yourself a little bit of who you know and who you're connected with and maybe they have ended up somewhere that sparks your curiosity. Also don't disregard your current organization internally to you. Maybe you want to move from comms to graphic design. Do you have a graphic design team in your current organization? Again it doesn't matter if you don't want to stay there, they'll know people, right? So you always ask them, who else can you connect me with? Who else can I chat to next? So don't disregard that either. You can also go out and find people that you aren't necessarily connected to yet, but still spark your interest, or maybe you've got a few mutual connections, but it's a little bit looser. So you might want to go to your alumni page on LinkedIn. So you go to LinkedIn, where you studied, hit alumni and then put in your keywords, say finance or marketing or whatever you're looking to pivot into, sustainability, etc. You can also do that for target companies you already have in mind. So for example, if you know that you'd love to work for Sephora or for Disney or whatever that looks like, go directly to the company page, check out the people, put in your keywords, and it's literally got all of the people who have registered LinkedIn profiles who work for that company. It couldn't be a more complete public directory of people working at that company and go through and see, do I have any connections here? Do I know someone who knows someone who knows someone? And just have a wee poke around and see what you can find there as well. Also, special interest groups on LinkedIn are a very untapped resource. So for example, I'm part of groups on LinkedIn dedicated to career change, dedicated to organizational psychology, dedicated to neuroscience and work, dedicated to all of the things that I'm interested in, and there could be people in there that I would like to connect with. Why don't you go and join groups of your future career and see what kind of people are hanging out in there. And this is actually a really good hack because did you know that if you share a group with someone, you can message them as if they're a first degree connection, okay? So you don't need to go and pay for LinkedIn Premium if you share that group, which is really nice as well. Also outside of LinkedIn, think about, you know, social networks in general. You've got Facebook, you've got other social networking sites, you've got meetup.com. Where are these people who are likely to share your future career? Where are they hanging out? So for example, if you want to work in conservation, are there Facebook groups dedicated to certain organizations, to volunteer efforts? You will be able to find your people if you think about where they also might be hanging out to. When I wanted to move to France and work in HR, okay, I wasn't changing professions, but I was changing countries, and I joined the New Zealanders in France Facebook group, I could have posted in that, for example, is anyone in here working in human resources? That would have been a great tactic to connect with people. You can also find people on events, online events, hosting webinars, hosting events on, on interest topics, um, maybe launching a book virtually, all of that kind of stuff will allow you to also find your people. So checking out the events area as well. Now, once you've found your people, the next question of course is how can I improve my response rate? Now, the reality is usually only about one in 10 people will reply to you. 
It's not because you suck. It's not because they hate you. It's not because they're going to blacklist you. It's because people are busy. People aren't always on LinkedIn. I know I don't get email notifications. I've turned notifications off on LinkedIn because it's too hectic. Like not everyone's going to see your message, have time to process your message. Maybe they'll see your message and be like, oh, I'd love to chat to her and then completely forget about it. You know, humans be humans. Okay. And I remember one of my clients connected with someone she was really excited about and they said that they were going to catch up and then they got ghosted and they were kind of heartbroken. They followed up and then two weeks later, the person came back and said, hey, I've just been, you know, married and on my honeymoon, I would love to chat with you. Okay. Remember people have lives. People have a lot going on. The response rate's not going to be 10 out of 10. It might be one to two out of 10. And so you've just got to keep that in mind. It means that if you want to have your 10 to 15 conversations, you want to connect with a hundred to 150 people. Now, how can you increase your response rate? You want to see, do we have any mutual connections? Did we go to the same school? Do we share volunteer organizations? Are they a career changer like me? Do they have my nationality or are they from my hometown too? Or all of these kinds of things. If you can focus on finding people that you have something in common with or something on their profile that strikes you in a specific way, this is going to be gold because you can use that in that, that really human and authentic and genuine connection message. So you want to try to find, is there anything here that brings me closer to being similar to this person? Because you know, the like me bias in psychology does dictate that people are more willing to help people that they feel are like them. So once you've identified both the people you want to reach out to and the ones that are more likely probably going to get back to you, how do you connect with them? What do you say to these people? So I'm going to give you three of my favorite LinkedIn connection messages. You know, the little message that you put in when you connect with someone on LinkedIn, you always do that. You want to make sure that it's personalized and that it's thoughtful. And I'm going to give you some templates right now that you can use and you you can play with to be able to connect with others on LinkedIn. All right, here's the first one. Hello X, I'm reaching out because I think you might have my dream job. I'm doing a lot of career exploration right now and the recommendations on your profile sound like the exact kind of impact I strive to have in my next role. We'd love to learn more about the day-to-day -day realities of the role. Muchas gracias and then your name. Okay, so this is a nice example of that they've gone through the person's LinkedIn profile, they've scanned for something that stood out to them, and in this case it was their recommendations, the things that their colleagues and team members were saying about them, and they thought, that's the kind of impact I want to have on the world. I need to reach out to this person. So complimenting them on that or drawing something out that you found fascinating, as long as it's for real. Here's another one. Hi X, a mutual connection, the wonderful Sarah Post recommended I reach out to you. I'm chatting to people in the HR profession right now to ensure it's the perfect fit for me before I pivot on over from marketing. Would love to have your perspective. Cheers, name. This is really nice if you've been able to identify a mutual contact and you've asked them, hey, do you mind if I you know, name drop you when I reach out to them or do you mind connecting us? The third message is more so for someone who is a little bit higher up and you've wanted to connect with them, but you need to find kind of an in. Um, and so often I recommend that you Google these people. Have they been on a podcast? Have they written an article? Have they been interviewed somewhere? And can you take something that they've said that resonates with you and use that for the connection? So here's one of those. Hey name, I enjoyed your interview on the XXX podcast. What you said about something that they said really resonated with me. I'd love to learn how you became role as it's what I want to do next and I could really learn from your experience. Would you be open to jumping on a quick call? Now these LinkedIn connection messages are all well and good, but as I said before, not everyone's on LinkedIn every day, every week, even every month, they may not see it. It's just nice to have at least attempted to start that conversation over on LinkedIn, given that is a professional networking platform and people are there to have a profile to connect and to network on that profile. So, you know, the context is already plain in your favor. If they don't reply, no worry, the art of the follow-up is super important. So what I recommend is sending them a follow-up email. Now, if you don't know their email address, there's two places to check. The first is on their LinkedIn profile. They often do have it listed under contact information. And if they don't, you can use a website, which is called hunter.io. You can put the URL of the company for which they work in that system and it will spit out the most likely email address structure and you can use that and construct that to be able to email them directly. So email is going to be more effective probably at getting some responses because that's where people are spending their time and they are very very likely to see it. So 
What you'll do is you'll email them and you'll say something a little bit like this. Hi name, my name is Rosie and I am a career coach with several years of experience working on HR topics across Fortune 500s, government and tech startups. We've just connected over on LinkedIn actually, I hope you don't mind me reaching out here. Recently I embarked on a quest to find a company where I can add enormous value on this kind of project contributing to a cause that I deeply care about. And the reason that I'm reaching out is that I'd love to ask you about your experience specifically doing specific work in this company. Just 15 minutes maximum promise. Specifically, I would love to know and then list a couple of specific questions tailored to what the person is likely to know about. Make it easy for them. I know your time is extremely valuable, so don't feel the need to respond in depth. If you do have a few minutes to chat, I would really appreciate it. Give me a few time options and I'll send through the calendar invitation. Have a great end to your week. Best, your name. Now the reason that this works is that you want to make it easy for them. You want to organize it for them. They just have to give you a few availabilities and you will send through the invitation and the Zoom link and you'll make sure it's very, very easy. You're just asking for 15 minutes and you're keeping it very specific. When someone reaches out and they say, can I pick your brain? It is so freaking overwhelming because you don't know what they're going to ask you about. And you don't know, like, will I have the answers? Like, how long is this going to go on for? Like, what if it's super complex? When you specify what you're going to ask them already, like a couple of general questions, people are much more likely to hop on that call. Follow up is so important. I would definitely recommend following up twice via email, um, probably about two to four weeks apart. So maybe two weeks afterwards, follow up again. And then four weeks after that, you might want to follow up a final time. And if they don't get back to you, cool, cool. That's fine. There'll be other people who will be getting back to you. So we're just going to focus on those people. What you need to remember is that it's never personal. As we said, humans be humans, humans be busy. Like people have lives, people have stresses, people have a lot on at work. It may just not be the right time. I connected someone the other day and the person privately messaged me and said, hey, I've actually just been made redundant. We're going through this massive restructure at work right now. I really don't feel like networking. I'm so sorry. Like you never know what's going on for the other person. So just please don't take it personally. It's not about you. It's about them. And just focus on the people who are saying yes. Now, speaking of the people who have said yes, once you've got them on a phone call, that precious 15 minute phone call, what are you going to ask them? So here are some ideas, some questions for you that you can, you know, play with, but you're going to tailor what you ask them to the research that you do on this person. You're obviously going to understand their career journey a little bit more and not ask them something super obvious. Um, it's all going to be about the person who's in front of you, but here are some ideas to get started. Can you tell me about the scope of your responsibilities at work? What's something that you think would surprise people about your day to day? What are some big projects that you're working on right now or that you finished up recently? What part of this job do you personally find most satisfying? How would you describe someone that would really excel in this career? What skills do they have? What personality traits? What does the future look like in your industry? If you had to start your career again, which steps would you take to get to where you are? What resources would you recommend for maximizing my success in a role like this? And then you always ask this one, do you have any recommendations for other people that I can chat to about this profession or this industry or any other resources that I can explore? This question is actually very strategic because what you're going to always, always, always do is take action on that. You're going to reach out to the person. You're going to read that book. You're going to do whatever they recommend so that you can loop back to this person later and keep them in the loop and have another touch point with them. After you have these conversations, not only will you have immense clarity, but you will have highly precise targeted people in your network who are going to be able to open doors for you over the course of your career. This is the kind of work that pays off in dividends over many, many years to come. Okay. So you're going to follow up with these people with, you know, thank you notes. You're going to touch back with them as often as you can. And eventually you can send through your resume to them and ask them, Hey, how's this looking? I would love your perspective on it and so on and so forth. Once you've had an initial chat with someone, it's much easier. It's called the foot in the door for philosophy, it's much easier to be able to make asks and for you two to start exchanging favors for one another. Of course, this is the groundwork for internal referrals, for someone advocating for you. You know, I've seen people really take others under their wing and make it happen for them, that career change. So it is so, so, so worth it. I hope that this video has equipped you with some, some ideas, the questions, the templates, the tools, finding these people to make sure that you can start networking as a career changer because it will be absolutely game changing. Now, don't forget I'm going live. This is not going to happen again. 
click the link down below to register your spot and we can talk more around meaningful career change around purpose around fulfillment and career by design so i'm so excited to see you there until then you can binge these videos here around career change resources if you're wanting to make a profession or industry kind of jump and otherwise stay badass and i'll see you here next week on the badass careers youtube channel bye